If you're looking to improve your fitness, your health, you want to lose body fat, build muscle, just feel a lot better, one of the best possible things you could do is hire a good trainer. Today's episode, we're going to talk about the five reasons why most people should hire one. I like it. Yeah. <clears throat> this is a good one because um, when you look at the data on uh, people's success rate, and really the best data we have is, has, is in regards to weight loss because um, that's what, what tends to be tracked. The fail rate with weight loss is incredibly high, incredibly high. It's like uh, um, some estimates put it at like 90%. Mm -hmm. It's like 10% of the people that lose weight will keep it off, whereas 90% gain it back. And if you're watching and listening to this right now, odds are you've experienced that um, yourself. Now, working with a trainer dramatically improves the odds that you'll succeed. Dramatically. At the very least, it's going to triple your success. Uh, in my experience working with good trainers and I, you know, all of us have did this for, for a long time, your success rate is even higher than that, far higher than that. Um, so it's one of the best things you can invest in. And of all the things that people invest in to improve their odds of fat loss or changing the way they look or their health, I can't think of a single thing that has a better return on investment. I can't think of a single yeah. anything. There's nothing that you can invest in. And people spend a lot of money on this, a lot of money on supplements and, um, you know, diet plans and all that kind of stuff. Um, but really it's like, if you have a guide, you have a trainer, like you're, that's, there's, there's nothing better you can do for yourself to ensure that success. 24 hour fitness used to have a stat that was in regards to this and very useful, uh, for those of us that were managing gyms. <clears throat> and I remember it was, uh, the, the reason, the main reason why they started to include five personal training sessions with the purchase of a um, Key Fit Plus membership, which was like their lifetime membership or a membership that you prepaid for three years, right? And they found that the average person that bought a membership and got started uh, would use the membership consistently for the first two months, then fall off, but continue paying for seven months. So the person would w use the gym for two months consistently, fall off to where it was sporadic or not anymore at all, and then for seven months after that, continue paying, and then- and So then nine gets, months you got someone. Right. And they found that the client that bought a membership that also got a member or also got a personal trainer, even if it was for just five personal training sessions, would stay for three plus years of consistency. Yeah. And so that was a, a major pivot for that company to start to include five personal training sessions with, uh, and I really attribute a, a lot of the growth and success that 24 Hour Fitness had back in its heydays to figuring this out, mm -hmm. of re realizing, wow, if we just got you know these members in front of a trainer for five visits, uh, their longevity in, in the business or in coming to the gym uh, substantially increased. And of course, I mean, it, it makes sense because, and there's other, there's other factors that I think play into this too, because I forget what the stat is on um, injury in the first couple of months. Oh, yeah. It's really high yeah. too. So not only is this, because people are probably thinking, oh, that's not me. I, I, I'm motivated and I'm going to, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm not the person that's going to quit. Well, it's not always just because people quit. Uh, a high percentage get hurt right. for, for from doing things improperly, and so having that that personal trainer, uh, especially when you're first getting started, and I would make the case regardless of where you're at in your journey, but especially when you get started, is is paramount. Well, how you open it up, I think the biggest distinction is that uh, people end up gaining the weight back, and the, the easy part. Well, I guess not the easy part. The one that's marketed to people the most is that if you there, you can come in and you can you can basically lose weight if you uh, throw the kitchen sink at it. If you do all these things at once, if if you just put hard work into it and you show up, um, but after a while, if you don't have the right plan, if you don't have uh, you know the the right uh, programming for you to to sustain and to uh, create like a a longevity to this to this weight loss journey, uh, the psychological piece to that is, is so much, um, 
it's a lot more than I think people uh, give weight to. Uh, and to have a personal trainer there to really like coach you through a lot of the pitfalls uh, to keep you going and realize that there's there's going to be setbacks, there's going to be challenges that you didn't foresee uh, really helps to keep you going and keep you um, on the right on the right path. Yeah, look, um, it's it's interesting because I think people get, you know, you kind of tapped in this a little bit, Justin. There's this misconception misconception on the challenge and difficulty of getting fit and then staying fit. I, I think there's a huge misconception or misunderstanding. I think the understanding is, well, if I just go sweat and move, um, and then if I just eat less, then it's all good. I'm going to succeed. But the, again, the data shows you probably won't. And it's actually one of the more, of all the things that people attempt it's actually, in terms of the data, it's actually one of the most challenging things. I I don't know if people would try other things knowing how challenging it was based off of data and not hire someone to help them. Yeah. You know, it's very interesting. I think there's a misconception around exercise too, where, <clears throat> well, if I just move, that's good. Oh, it's better than nothing. But um, if you if you move properly, it makes a profound impact on your success. Here's the, I mean, the top reasons why people stop, I'll tell you what they are. One, injury is always there. Two, I feel like I'm putting way more effort and getting very little return. If you feel like you're putting a ton of effort into something and you're getting very little back, yeah. uh, it's it, the you're going to want to stop. It doesn't make any sense. It's, it's illogical. Very discouraging. It's yeah. very discouraging. Like any relationship. Remember, this is a relationship that you build with fitness. Imagine having a relationship where you put all the effort in. You do everything to nourish uh, and and help this relationship flourish. And the other person is like not returning your calls. They don't want to show up. They don't. So you're like, this is a waste of time. I'm not going to, you might know, try for a month or two. If you really care about this person, be like, you know, this is not worth it. Well, imagine, That's going, a big to, one. imagine going to work for 40 hours and, and getting your paycheck and it says $0. Yeah, on it. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, because this is laborious, right? Ouch. This isn't just a relationship where I got to call you on the That's phone right. or send a letter to you every now and then. That's right. I got to show up to the gym and put labor in. And so imagine going to work for 40 hours, opening up your paycheck, and then the yeah, weekend, there's a dollar. Yeah. And you show up and you're in pain while you're going. Like, so to your other point of like people just not knowing how to uh, uh, address certain issues that they have before they even get started. I think a, a personal trainer is so invaluable in that they, regard. They, they also, another reason why people quit is they don't know what they don't know in terms of the challenge. Now an experienced trainer knows what you're going to experience. So people who embark on a fitness journey think that the, the, the biggest challenge is getting to their fitness goal. It's not the biggest challenge is not getting to your fitness goal. That's a challenge. It's one of them. It's not the biggest one, but they think, if I can get to my goal, I'm done. I'm there. I won. I succeeded. No, maintaining it is far bigger challenge. In fact, far more people will lose weight than keep it off. Lots of people lose weight. It happens all the time. People don't keep it off. And then third, once you get there, there are other challenges uh, that um, you come upon. For example, okay, now I'm here. Now what? How do I keep this going? This you know, is great, but it's not what I thought it would be. Or you hit stumbling blocks along the way, and maybe the first stumbling block you hit, you could overcome by simply doing more <clears throat> and eating less. But then at some point, it doesn't become feasible. I can't do more. This is impossible. I have a family. I can't work out more than I am now. I don't want to or eat less than I currently am. I'm already feeling like I'm super deprived, and I can't even enjoy myself uh, on, on a, you know, a date night with my spouse. Um, and so it's just the fail rate super high. So hiring a guide, a trainer who knows what they're doing, they're going to forecast the challenges to you. They're going to tell you, here's what you're going to experience. That makes a big difference. They know how to properly uh, train you and they can take you along this. So imagine this challenging journey that you're on. You're going to try and go from here to uh, somewhere else. And then after you get there, you're going to keep walking anyway. You don't know what the directions are. You don't know if you need to climb a mountain, if you need to wade through a river. You don't know if you need to drive. There's a cliff take a on boat. the other side of that. You don't know if there's a yeah. dragon uh, around the corner. <laughs> you don't know if you know what is going on. But then there's this person that's like, oh, that journey? I've walked that journey uh, myself, and I've walked and taken hundreds of people on that exact journey. I know what the path looks like. I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to make sure we don't take a wrong turn. I'm going to show you how to avoid those pitfalls. And then, by the way, some of them you can't. You're going to fall in. I'm going to be there to put a ladder down, help you climb out. 
I'm going to help you through this journey. So you can always look to me as we move through this. That's why the success rate is so much higher uh, working has, with, a good, with a good trainer. Has the interest in personal training uh, increased or yes. stayed the same? Or? It's always growing. Is it? Yeah, is ever, it always ever growing? Ever since they were tracking it. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Personal training has always has grown it's nice and consistently right. um, over the years. I think as more and more people realize the the value in it, um, uh, the, 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 the interest seems to be going there up. There seems to be a, a resurgence, uh, especially too with like everybody going back to the gyms. And I think that, you know, that's sort of the first step always as we always, you know, saw people like this rush to get into the gym, but now it's like, what do I do? And it, there's a little bit of a confusion there. So, yep. you know, the interest in personal trainer to at least uh, spend a few sessions. So it's like, okay, I, I can like navigate through here. That's at least like your, your second step yes. uh, people find, but yeah, they're, they're, there has to be like, uh, you know, th this this need for people to to understand like how do I do this? How do I how do I resistance train? Because I'm hearing all these great benefits from it, and you know, a personal trainer will really help you with that. Well, I used to tell people this when I would talk to them when I was a gym manager because you know, managing a gym, you sell memberships, but then you sell services in there, including personal training. A membership, the investment for a membership is far less than the investment for personal trainer. One session with a trainer will cost you more than uh, three months of access to the gym, just one session, typically, sometimes <laughs> even more than that. And so when I would talk to people about training, they would they would bring that up and say, look, um, let me put it this way. Would you rather take $20 out of your pocket and light it on fire, or would you rather spend $1,000 and get $2,000 in return, right? One is a hard, larger investment, but you get twice your money back. The other one, you just light on fire. So it, yes, it, it costs more money to work with a good trainer, but you're going to get what you want. If you don't, you're not going to, you're not going to do get anything. Do, yeah. do you think that that's the number one reason? Why, why, if like, we're, we're going to go over all these five important reasons and uh, we can make all these cases, we laid the, set the table with the stats on how much more. So why is it that still a majority of people don't invest in a personal trainer when they get a gym membership? Because they say I can, Oh, Oh, it's, I don't know, hundred dollars an hour, 80 bucks an hour or whatever. So you think I can money. do it on my own? Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. I think it's hard for them to justify. <laughs> yeah. I can do it on my own. What do you mean? I don't need a, you know, I hear this. I don't need a trainer. I'll just go work out. <laughs> they think they just need to lose weight and it's yeah. just about movement. Yeah. yeah so yep. I, I would make the argument that it's, Less about money, it's more about they actually think they they think it's easier than like what it's it really That's what I mean. Yeah. So they look at the money and it's just not. I mean, if I sold you a house for Which is really dollars. interesting to me because <clears throat> when you understand the complexity of uh, the metabolism, the brain, you know, like, and you are uh, attempting to solve that equation, it's it's far more difficult than popping the hood of your car and fixing the engine. I mean, that's actually way more straightforward True. Uh, to fix. True. And you could literally YouTube the exact car, the exact problem, and have a step by step with it. Yet, we nobody does that. No, and we're, nobody does that. You you take it to a mechanic, right? Yet, with your own body, which is far more complex. Far, so you can't YouTube. You know, uh, I weigh 230 pounds on this and that. I can't lose weight. Fix it and actually get the answer. That's how yeah. that's how complex it is because there's so many variables with the individual. It's like imagine if that's what fixing the car was like. Yet we have no hesitation of taking our car into a mechanic when something goes down. But yet, and and we don't have the audacity or arrogance to think, oh, I'll, I could fix it easily, yeah. even though I know nothing really about engines. But I could, I could totally. You you still take that in. So it's so interesting to me that we don't. Yeah, perceive it's a people's expectations. Yeah, exactly. People's expectations are completely off because of how we've marketed to them, and we know, we know that the most effective way to capture their attention is to uh, market that we're going to solve their problem in a shorter amount of time, and it only is going to take X, Y, Z to get you there. And you know, it, any good trainer that has any weight knows that it's much longer journey than yeah. that. And, and okay, okay, yes, the human body is far more of a complex machine than a car, but it's also not just the machine; it's also a feeling, right. breathing behavior, right. uh, creature. 
So a trainer is, although they are going to know what to do, they also have to know how to guide you because you are going to get in your own way. And this, this is why I said the metabolism and the brain. Yeah. Right? Because within the brain comes the, the emotions uh, yeah. and the all the trauma the and all the yeah. other things. And so if you think- Like, of, why can't I stop the, eating like if this? If the brain is <laughs> yeah. one of the most complex things that we know of and the gut is one of the, and the metabolism is one of the most complex things, you have to- you have to work with both of those to to have somebody successful at weight loss or building muscle or health right uh -huh. and yet we uh have this arrogance of oh yeah i could do this i could figure it out no problem but with something as as simple i would think i would say as complex but as simple as a engine to your car uh, we don't even think about uh, troubleshooting that we'll just take that no. right into the now before we get into <laughs> some of the most important reasons uh because someone might be listening and say okay well how do i get a good trainer We've done other episodes on this, but uh, but just a couple easy things. A good trainer is typically educated and experienced. So if somebody's been training clients uh, who are like you, okay, so if they're like an athletic trainer and you're just an everyday person, maybe find someone that works with someone like you. But experience, probably a couple of years, at least two or three years, and educated. They're they're certified, um, uh, you know, maybe once or twice. But their experience, experience shows one, they know what they're doing because they could last. The training business, it's hard to last as a, a, right. a, as a trainer longer than a year if you don't do a decent job. If you've made job. it beyond yeah. five years as a personal trainer, you're probably pretty good. You're pretty probably good. Probably doing yeah. something right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, at what level of great you are yet, I don't know. But if you've made it five years, yeah. uh, you've, you're have you probably pretty good That's at right. what you're doing. That's yeah. right. So experience and education. And then obviously, um, you know, those are the two biggest things you want to look at. Today's program giveaway is MAPS Strong. If you want to enter to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and then turn on your notifications. Do all those things. And then if you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Now, this episode is brought to you by a sponsor, NASM. This is the world's premier national certification for personal trainers and coaches. It's literally the best in the world. And we are very privileged to be working with them. And if you go through our link, NASMPT. Uh, dot com right now if you get their certified personal training certification you can get their certified nutrition coach for free so you'll get that with that certification on that link also this month's sale maps split and the sexy athlete bundle of workout programs all of that 50 percent off if you're interested click on the link at the top of the description below all right back to the show uh, all right, so the first reason why you want to work with a trainer um, is they understand proper exercise. Now, there's a lot of misconceptions around exercise. So some people think trainers know exercises and that they know proper form to exercises, and that's their value. That is a small part of their value. Yes, if you're a trainer, you need to know exercises. And yes, if you're a trainer, you need to know proper exercises. But that's not the hard part. The hard part is applying them and programming workouts and using the right combination of exercises for the individual that you're working for. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's, it could be as, as simple as here's a, here's proper form for a barbell row, which is a great exercise, generally speaking, but depending on the person, wrong exercise for you, we're not going to do this one right. or right exercise for you. We're going to do this one. And a good trainer knows when that exercise, even done properly, is wrong for the wrong for the is yeah. not the right exercise. And the only way they know that is by a proper assessment. That's yeah. right. So that's the first key, a, a red flag, uh, I should say. If you are interviewing a personal trainer and you're going through the process and they don't take you through a proper assessment where they're really getting all those details and information, not just what you're telling them in terms of past injuries and all that kind of stuff, but they're taking you through movements and they're really like absorbing a lot of this information uh, from having you move and observing. Yes. They also know how to take you as an individual, have you pick the right exercise and we'll get into programming in a second but take the right exercise for you. We'll just keep it to one movement. Watch you do that exercise, show you, watch you, and then coach you on how to move properly. Now, you might be thinking, what's so hard about that? I watch them do it and I copy it. Oh, really? Have you seen a golf swing? Can you go swing a golf <laughs> club? Yeah. Have you seen someone throw a baseball? Can you go throw a baseball like they do? It's the same thing with exercise. They're all skills. And a very good trainer knows how to teach a skill of an exercise effectively. It is not at all. One of the other misunderstandings is that, oh, I just 
watch the exercise and I can copy it. This, by the way, for new trainers is always a shock. Uh, I remember <laughs> Justin talking about this. Oh, yeah. You walk in, you're like, oh, here's how you do it. Here you go, Miss Johnson. And then you're like, why aren't you doing what I showed you? Yeah. They doesn't can't. look anything like I yeah, just did. They can't. <laughs> what do they I just, do with this? Their body doesn't move that way. They don't know how to get their body to move that way. And then your skill comes in, into play on it, how do I get this person to move properly? How do I pick the right movements to 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 train their body to move this way? How do I cue them properly? What am I telling them to do? Why can't they move properly? Okay, let me figure this out. And then they teach you the skill. It's so important that people understand this too because your return on your investment is dependent on this. So if you, just like investing in the stock market, like anybody can go put money in the stock market, but having a professional teach you how to do it really dictates the return on investment of yeah. that money. Like anybody, anybody can go out and go do the movement, but how well you perform the movement really dictates the return on that investment. Right. And so you can't stress enough that it isn't as simple as it's like as going in and just doing the movements. It's how effectively you do the movements dictates how much muscle you build, how much body fat you take off. Like that's the stuff that matters like if you don't do it properly then you don't get the same return on your investment and so i think it's important to recognize that yeah of course you can go under there and go try and just do a bench press but having a uh, somebody who's a professional who's going to teach you how to do that properly makes a huge difference on the return but, on the investment by the way i use the golf swing as an example i like that one because uh an expert would see two golf swings and could tell if one is good and one isn't whereas the average person might look at both of them and say they kind of look the same. Like a, a small change in a movement can take it from being effective to dangerous. No joke, especially with some of the most effective Well, and sticking with that analogy, Sal, that same professional can look at that golf swing and give you the slightest detail of, oh, open up your grip a tiny bit and it make all the difference. Right, right. You know, versus like the average person looking at it and just like, yeah, they yeah. both swings look yeah. pretty bad. Try to hit it to the right yeah. instead. Yeah, right. Both swings look pretty bad. Try this, try that, try this. And it's like, you, you know, yeah. know where you, a coach goes, oh, yeah. widen your stance by two inches. And you know, it's like a, that's- a, a trainer also knows proper intensity. Everybody thinks hard is what you need to do. That's not true. Intensity has to be individualized. If it's not, you will fail. They also understand- volume, how many exercises, how many reps for the individual. I keep saying the individual because one of the values of working with a trainer is they train you, not a million of, of, of a, a, a bunch of people. You as an individual uh, need to be trained as an individual. They also know order of exercises, combinations of exercises, what we're doing through the week, through the month, how we progress, how we regress, how we move through the workout. That's what I mean by they understand uh, proper exercise. Now, the second thing is that this one's really important. They can guide you through pitfalls. There are going to be pitfalls. You are going to plateau and you are going to be challenged. Now you might be thinking, I just need someone to kick my ass. I hear this. I see hear this all the time. Ugh. I want to hire a trainer yep. just to kick my ass and motivate me. <clears throat> no, you don't. This is not effective. Period. End of story. If it was as if, if, if all you needed was somebody to yell at you to get in shape, then, uh, you know, everybody with a, an abusive partner or parent or whatever <laughs> would be, do just fine. Would be jacked. <laughs> it doesn't work. It only works when you're in those early stages of motivation. Believe me, it makes things so undesirable, so crappy. It fills you full of shame as you fail. And eventually you just don't want to do it anymore because why are you telling me just to be motivated? Like this is a good trainer knows how to guide you through those pitfalls and those challenges for when the scale doesn't move for when you feel a particular way, for when you're not motivated. That's when it's hard. I never, ever had a challenge getting a client to show up who was motivated. They would show up on their own. It was when they weren't motivated that a lot of my skills came into play. This is what a good trainer will do. Yeah, and a lot of times, too, like a good trainer is going to be able to simplify a lot of things for you. So it's going to be able to make things relatable uh, and really be able to peer into like your personality and how to steer you based off of uh, a lot of behaviors that, you know, you observe as a coach uh, that's going to move the needle the most. And so, you know, for the most part, it's it's just like very simple, very direct kind of cues and things, uh, whether it's your exercising or whether it's with your nutrition uh, to to focus on for those few days or for that week. Uh, and it's, it's a very deliberate targeted approach, uh, which, you know, it, it, 
it helps. I think a lot of the 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 stress and and the anxiety over working out is because of it's it's actually a lot. Once you get into it, there's a lot of variables, a lot of factors to it, and to be able to just have clarity of like this is yeah. the simple thing to focus on, it goes so far. The art of forecasting is so unbelievably powerful. Uh, it it's, reminds me of what just happened to me recently with uh, and my wife does this to me with things, right? So and it's so funny how. Uh, I can clearly see the difference of how I respond in these situations. And it, it, right away, I connect the dots to, oh, this is so much like coaching a client through a weight loss journey. And that is, we just got back from a trip where we were down in Universal Studios during the 4th of July weekend. So you can imagine how just over the top yeah. ridiculous crowds are. And, so that, and Katrina tells me at the end of the day, she's like, God, you were so good, honey, like through the whole day, like just patient and this and that. But so much of that was her. Because she mentally prepped me going into You know that. it's gonna be busy. Yes, you know yeah, tell me, hot. honey, you know we're gonna have this. Mm -hmm. Honey, you know that someone's gonna bump into you when we're doing this. You know there's gonna be times where we're in the sun and it's like she's like like, yeah, yeah. And I'm going, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I got it, I got it. And yet when it happens, it's still uh, but then it I had this calming, this sense of calm that comes over me because it's like I knew this was you coming. Expected it. I knew this was coming, and so it doesn't bother me as much. A, this is just like when you're taking somebody through their journey in fitness because it will have pitfalls. It will have challenges. It will have setbacks. It will have plateaus. And a good coach and a trainer has the ability to forecast that for you. And boy, it's such a different experience when you worked your ass off for two weeks, you get on the scale and it didn't move anywhere. And you knew that was a possibility coming because your coach said, Hey, there's a good chance this might happen. And this might happen because we're doing X, Y, and Z. So be prepared for it. That's okay. It doesn't mean we're doing a bad yeah. job. I'm prepared for that. I expect that to happen during this journey. Now, when you set that expectation for the client and that happens, the feeling that they get the result from that is so different than if it is like out of the blue where mm -hmm. you're just coaching your client on their oh. 30 pounds of weight loss. You don't forecast anything. The first two weeks of the scale not moving comes and now they're pissed. Now they're distraught. Now they don't, now they don't trust you. Now they don't have faith now in where you're like taking unexpected excuses. problems. Yeah. yeah or really worse, good. they don't have you and they, they, this happened to themselves and they go, Oh my God, I quit. I don't want to do this. Or they overcorrect because they think, Oh, I'm not doing the right thing. Yeah. So now I need to do this thing. That right there is so, yeah. so powerful. And back and to Justin's point too, a, a lot of it is not just telling you where to place your focus because those are the areas where you're going to see the most uh, movement, but also where not to place your focus because mm -hmm. a lot of people place their focus in the wrong area. And a good trainer will say, actually, uh, that's not going to help you that much. I know you think adding hours of whatever cardio or doing this other thing is going to help you. So we're not going to make that, it's not going to make a big difference. Let's put your focus over here and here's why. It's good to have somebody there that can guide you through that process versus blindly going through as somebody and really only using your own past experience as a guide and your past experience was failure. Uh, so that's a terrible guide. Uh, next up is accountability. Um, this makes a big difference, especially in those early days of showing up, you know, especially if you're not comfortable in the fitness environment or gym environment. Um, and it's easy for you to come up with reasons why you shouldn't go, but you have an appointment and, you know, a good trainer is also someone you look forward to seeing by the way. Um, and we'll get more of that a little later, but this is somebody you look forward to seeing. So, you know, what, one thing I got good at later in my career was helping people who'd never really gotten comfortable working in a gym, but I knew they would show up because they had me there with them. Whereas if they came in by themselves, they probably not show up uh, as often. So when you have those appointments with a trainer, if you're training with them twice a week, the odds are you're going to exercise properly twice a week versus kind of having to count um, on yourself. And this is shown in the data. When people have an appointment with an instructor, mm -hmm. the odds that they're going to show up and not quote unquote flake are far higher than if they don't have anybody there um, helping them at all. I actually found a large percentage of my clientele base uh, hired me just for this. Yes. So I tend, I, I had quite a bit of uh, professionals that I train, right? Type A personalities, CEOs, founders, uh, business executives, right? The people that were professionals. That type of uh, archetype I found really uh, appreciated the accountability piece. In fact, many times I'd have them for years 
I had taught them everything I knew. They could totally go do them, but because they knew the way they ran their life, that they don't miss meetings, mm -hmm. they don't miss phone calls. They're they're very professional. That, that if they have a meeting with me, they that accountability piece was so powerful that they knew they just wouldn't miss. Whereas if they didn't have me to hold them accountable or to be there for a meeting, they would justify all the other things that are so busy in their mm -hmm. life to why they can't make that appointment. But just by having that commitment, even though they had the knowledge and, and an experience now of doing, they still would do that. So this is a really powerful piece when you understand the values, especially if you know you're that type of person, you know that, like, I mean, I remember leaning into this when uh, I started my Instagram page. And part of that was I was going to use my body transformation uh, as my way of garnering attention. And I knew that if I announced it publicly that I'm going to do this, I would have this weight of, I got to fall through because I said, I'm going to do this accountability piece. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there would have been many times during that journey had I not announced it, had I not put that accountability on me, that I probably would have made an excuse of, oh, I'm so busy right now, or I'm sick, I can't do it. It's like, oh, but no, because I have this accountability piece, I've, I followed through and execute. Many people were like this that I trained, and, and it was something that they leaned into. Well, and I think, too, a lot of people think of accountability like they could find like a workout buddy, or they can, you know, riff with their spouse or, uh, you know, be part of like a group that kind of does this. Uh, and you know, the reason why like a personal trainer is very professional is very detailed in terms of your individual needs. And, um, the thing you always consider is like, uh, people that love you, they love you. And, and, um, you know, a lot of times they'll, they'll kind of go with when you have that chatter in your head of like, well, I don't know if I should go and like, yeah, maybe you shouldn't go. And like, there's, you, all, you end up influencing them. You end up influencing <laughs> and then each other. And then it's yeah. just kind of, so to have somebody that's just kind of professional and just keep you on track and, and, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll steer it and you trust them. Like this is where like a personal trainer just totally trumps all yeah, the rest. Look, here's how powerful accountability is. Uh, some of the most ineffective forms of exercise are in group classes. We've talked about this before on podcasts. It's a big, uh, you're instructing a, a giant class of, uh, of lots of different individuals. The workout is going to be inappropriate for 90% of them because it's not individualized. And yet people like them because of the accountability. And yeah. gym data shows this. People that go to classes are more consistent than people who should try to go in on their own. Now, I'm not advocating to go do a group exercise class. My point is to show the power of accountability. Yeah. Of course, with a personal trainer, it's individualized. So you also get the added benefit the quality of goes up. a proper appropriate workout just for you. That's individualized for you versus one that's written for a group of 30 people. Next up is, uh, that trainers are objective. Now, why is someone that's objective important? I'll tell you why your mind will play games on you oh, yeah. on this journey so much. It's not even funny. The two biggest liars in your life when it comes to fitness are the scale and the mirror. The scale and the mirror are the two biggest liars. The scale tells you mass, doesn't tell you fat loss, doesn't tell you muscle gain, doesn't tell you performance, doesn't tell you improved health or hormone profile or libido or energy or anything else. It just says weight. So cut your foot off, you lost weight, uh, you know, uh, put on a heavy jacket, you gained weight. I mean, I'm being silly here, but it lies to you in terms of what's actually happened. The mirror lies to you as well. And I'll give you a great example. I'm sure most people can relate to this. There was a point in your life when you thought you looked so terrible and, you know, and oh my God, I don't look good. And now it's 15 years later, you look back at those pictures and you go, what was I thinking? I looked amazing, yeah. but I was so insecure about mm -hmm. how I looked. I thought I didn't look good in a bikini or in my bathing suit. I was tripping, but you believed it. You believed it in that moment. Both those things lie to you. So it's really nice to have a coach or a trainer be objective to when you weigh yourself and the scale goes up a little bit and then you do a body fat test. It's body fat loss, muscle gain. You're like, yeah, but my weight went up and they go, yeah, you look amazing. Your strength is higher. You've got more energy. We're talking about this. Look at the curve in your hamstrings and you go, you know what? It, I, I think it kind of makes sense. I think you're right. Having that objective person inform you of the successes you had when you're focusing on maybe the one failure is also another reason to have somebody who's objective. It's mm -hmm. great to have that person there who's an expert and a professional to help calm that, that, that part of you that lies 
and is often fed by, like I said, the mirror and the scale. I wish I remember exactly at what point in my career that I really pieced this together. I don't remember when it was, but I do remember what I did because of it. And it, it was, it became this conversation that I would be having with my clients and I'm looking at it and I'm going like, I, I know they look better. They, I've just, yeah. I, I've, I can see it, but they would be telling me, no, like, ah, oh, I, I look worse. I don't feel it. I'm like, God, this kid. And then I started to do this where I said, okay, every Friday morning, you are to take a photo front side and back in the same outfit uh, every morning, every, fr or every Friday morning uh, through this journey. And that became a mandatory thing that I did with all my clients. And it was for me. And it was for me so that when we had these conversations, you can pull them up. <laughs> I would pull them up. And I, and I, I can't tell you how many times I literally had to do this. I mean, I'd put them side by side on my phone and be like, this was you four weeks ago. This is you right now. Like, can you not see the definition in your shoulder here? Do you see how much your weight? And I'd have to like literally point to the, all the areas on their body that I could show them. So in, wild how blind improvement. Be, yeah. and, the, and then they would go, uh, okay, I guess I kind of see it. And it's like, wow, like, that's that's how important the uh, having a trainer for the obje objectivity of this is because so many of these clients, they, they have this distorted view of themselves because of whatever said insecurity uh, from their past. And a lot of times they can't even see when when it, they're moving in the right direction. So having that trainer to be able to point that out. And again, this is where I started. This was the purpose of the photos was I re recognized this and it was happening to me. And I like, try getting in that argument without the pictures where they're telling you, I see myself, Adam, every day. I don't look better today than I did when we first started. And I'm going like, no, I, I think you do. Like, no, I don't. And like, okay, I lose. I don't have anything. But once I had the photos, and then I could break it down and be like, look, 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 look. And then they would go, and it would, even then it was like, oh, oh, okay. I guess I kind of see it. It was like, wow. Yeah. You know, like that's how distorted some people's views of themselves well, are. Well, I mean, we all experienced this. I mean, what got sure. us into fitness were these insecurities. I, I thought I was this super, super skinny kid. I look at pictures now when I was 15, 16 years old and I look like a normal kid. It yeah. wasn't this extreme, but I felt that way. And, and it would have been nice to have a coach that I trusted be objective and tell me, actually, you're doing pretty good. And here's what's happening. Here's what's happening here. And maybe use the method like you said, Adam, but that objectivity can be very valuable because you lie to yourself. You lie to yourself about this fitness journey. And then those lies lead you to making decisions that don't help you, that actually counter um, what you're after. Now, finally, and I don't want to um, understate this because this is, I think, one of the most important parts of working with a good trainer is this whole process is far more enjoyable. Now, it's enjoyable for a lot of different reasons. One, your workouts are effective. It's great to, this is one of the best feelings in the world, is when you feel like your return is greater than your investment. That's how you should feel with a proper workout. In fact, one of my favorite comments I would get from clients is, they'd come to me and say, I can't believe we're getting these, these results. It kind of feels like I'm not putting a ton of effort into it. I mean, I'm putting effort, but not like I... I feel like I should be for what I'm getting. And then I knew like, oh, this is great. Like we're doing the right stuff. That makes it more enjoyable. Exercising properly is more enjoyable than exercising improperly. It doesn't hurt the same way. There's definitely pain with proper exercise, but it's a good kind of pain. You don't feel the, like, uh, like, you're, you're, like you're dead leaving the gym. You're not, not walking for three days afterwards because you did it properly. That also makes it more enjoyable. Feeling better at the end of your workout than you did at the beginning of your workout is a hallmark of a proper uh, workout. That's great. That's enjoyable. And then one of the final things is the person you're working with, the coach yeah. that you're working with, if you work with someone good, you look forward to seeing with seeing them. Now, why is this such an important factor? Well, it makes you come and train with them and do all this stuff, but what you're developing, because remember, if you like I said at the beginning of this episode, 90% of people gain the weight back. Whatever this is a relationship that you're trying to develop for the rest of your life, right? So if you get fit you want to stay fit. It's actually more important that you stay fit as you get older than it is even right now. So hopefully you're doing this in your 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. And if you're lucky in your 90s, you want to do this for the rest of your life. The relationship builds and especially is dependent on how it starts, right? So if it starts off in this enjoyable way, not that the workouts are fun and exciting themselves, but rather they give you more than you invest you feel good about it. You start to understand your body. You get through those pitfalls. You know how to do this after you're done with the trainer on your own. Well, now the odds that you'll have this relationship for the rest of your life 
go through the roof. That's why it's so important to have that enjoyable. Oh yeah. I can't aspect. stress like how important that is in the beginning to really take your time of observing these uh, trainers and coaches with their clients and how they interact. And um, because you, you, you want to look forward to it. You want to come in and, and know that you're going to have a, a great conversation in between sets. You're going to learn something. Probably you're going to grow. You're going to, um, you know, really look forward to, um, coming back and, 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 you know, relating with, with this person, because it's not just like a few, uh, it's not like a month's worth time. Like for the most part, like you're going to be connected to this person through this journey for, for a while. And so to be able to have that kind of rapport, um, you can, you can really kind of sense that when you, when you observe somebody for long enough. Totally. Listen, if you listen to this podcast consistently, you understand this is part of the formula. This is what what we knew going into this podcast was we couldn't just tell people the science and information like they had to enjoy the process of listening to the show or else it wouldn't be a show. It wouldn't con continually get people come back. come back and listen. Your it's And that we learned that from this part of the journey with clients is that, yeah, I got to know the science. Yeah, I got to know the nutrition, but they also have to enjoy this process if I'm going to keep them coming back. And it's no different than the formula that yep. you see in the podcast is like, yeah, we could just read studies and break down the science of, of nutrition and exercise. We absolutely can do that, but boy, it wouldn't be the show that it is today because it it has to have a, a piece of it that makes people like, you know what? I actually enjoy learning about this process through listening to these guys because there's an element that we've tried to build into it that's enjoyable for the listener. It's no different when you're going that's inside right. the gym. It's like, and a good trainer understands this piece of like, I got to help this client change their relationship with exercise and nutrition and make it more fun, make it more enjoyable if I'm going to make it a lifelong pursuit. Bo bottom line is this. The be really good trainers are not the trainers that get the most clients. They also get the most clients, but that's not what makes them really good. They're not the, the, the trainers that get people the best results, although that's a part of it. They're the trainers that get people to do this after they're done working with them and staying consistent forever. And this is a big piece of it. And again, if you invest, uh, you know, uh, in some cases it could be a few thousand dollars, sounds like a ton of money, but if it turns into this lifelong relationship, appropriate relationship with proper exercise and nutrition, where you improve your health, you improve your fitness, and then it's something you want to do for the rest of your life. I can't think of anything that costs a few thousand dollars that'll improve the quality of your life more than that. Literally, it'll improve every aspect, a healthy you and fit you is better in every aspect of your life. I don't care what thing you point out. So again, one of the greatest investments uh, you can make. Look, if you love the show, go to mindpumpfree.com. I have a free fat loss guide there. It's totally free. Breaks down the basic steps for fat loss. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is at mindpumpadam.